Yo, what is going on, YouTube? It is your boy, GZTV. I apologize in advance for the noise. My roommates, obviously, but we are here with the 69th episode. Um, I have to get this out because I'm leaving for a lab class here in like less than an hour. So I figured I'd get this recorded, throw the clips together, put it on YouTube real quick for you guys. I know I don't edit videos that much, but dude, I just don't have time for that. F episode 4 of Season 6 here. Um, yeah. Pretty interesting stuff. There's some new characters. There's characters that will no longer be a part of the show. People that passed on. So, pretty major. Pretty major, I would say. It's a pretty solid episode. A lot kind of happens. We're trying to talk about everything in a blob. I think you guys know by now how these videos go. Let's get into it. So, getting into kind of what happens. So, Tony's condition improves as he awaits final surgery, and his temperament seems softer. So, you know, he's, he's kind of recovering from being in that coma. Um, he's nearing, like, you know, being able to return to his business, being able to return to his family at home. So, things are really looking up for Tony right now at this point. So, when Aaron Arkaway and Pastor Bob Brewster, an evangelical minister, visit him, he joins them in prayer. And obviously, Aaron Arkaway was the guy that used to kind of have, like, a relationship with Janice. I think that was like last season or maybe two seasons ago. I don't remember, but yeah, I'm sure you guys remember him. He was a pretty solid part of the show for a little bit. There's like a little piece of hair here. Didn't really shave that well, I guess. But um, he spends his remaining days at the hospital interacting with two patients, John Schwinn and Rapper Deluxe, who has been shot seven times. So yeah, they kind of bond over there while they're in the hospital and they like talk to each other about some pretty serious topics at times you know they have some really like philosophical discussions and it's cool to see the viewpoint from three different people so deluxe invites tony to watch a boxing match in his hospital room uh Polly is there and Lambin said everyone is alone like the boxers shwana argues nothing is separate everything is kind of connected in some way which this guy's kind of like a scientist guy so he has some different theories about things obviously he's more of a conspiracist almost at this point he has a weird kind of concept for a lot of things but yeah so tony confides to swan that he is starting to believe they are all part of something bigger you know he saw in his coma you know a lot of people in real life people have recounted stories of the, themselves being in comas and like experiencing the craziest shit and i kind of believe them because com a coma is like you're on the bridge between life or death like which side are you gonna end up on you know, so who knows what happens <clears throat> in that gap, that gray area between life and death. It's what a coma is. So Bobby gets talking to Marvin, a member of Deluxe's Honorage. He's kind of like a member of the record label and like apparently his album's gonna be executive produced by Deluxe and like pushed by that record label and all this stuff. So, uh, Deluxe's injuries, it is believed, will help his career by providing him a huge boost in street cred, while Marvin is struggling for fame as a musician. <clears throat> He's kind of been shoved to the side, similar to like a Kanye West situation almost. If you guys know the story of Kanye West, you know, they didn't take him serious. So at first over at Rockefeller, and then he dropped an insane album. So, it's kind of like that sort of situation. I know the show has nothing to do with music, but I guess that part of it's kind of cool. So yeah, you want to get street cred. You want like people to know that you're tough and that you'll survive anything, and be a good role model to everyone wanting to be a street guy. I guess I don't know. I don't even think that's possible. But Bobby has a crazy proposal. He proposes to Marvin that he he jumpstarts career by shooting him in the fleshy part of the thigh, which is why the episode is called that. Um, it's kind of a wild thing. The fee agreed is $8,000, Marvin only pays $7,000, which Bobby reluctantly accepts. Again, he's, like, pro like if he gets caught, there's a risk, there's a chance of him being caught with um, attempted murder. And obviously, he's a part of the mafia, they know he has connections with him, so there's going to be hella charges stacked up. He's going to have a reason to get indicted, have a reason to go to prison, and he's probably going to be there for the rest of his life because of everything kind of piling on top of each other. So he then shoots Marvin in the buttocks. That's the thickest part of the thigh, pretty much. Honestly, it is. It's got the most fat in it. So, um, 
Yeah, so then we're getting to Polly's kind of situation. He goes through something ridiculous. There's a wild plot twist here. So on her deathbed, Polly's aunt Dottie, a nun, confesses to him that during World War II, she had an affair with a soldier and gave birth to a child, Polly himself. So now it is revealed that his aunt Dottie is his mother, and Nucci this whole time was his aunt. Yeah, Nucci, who he knows is his mother, is really his aunt, so... That's fucking crazy because Dottie apparently didn't want the burden of a kid and she didn't want to get an abortion or something. So she just handed him off to Nucci and called that his mother. So, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know how you can pull that off for so many years and no one have suspicions of it, but I guess they did it. So, um, devastated by the news and questioning his own identity, Polly struggles to remain focused at work. He's like losing himself here, you know. He's not able to get things done. So, after Dottie's funeral, which he does not attend, Polly tells Nucci she is no longer part of his life. He doesn't want to help her anymore. No more handouts. Not paying for your retirement home. Not buying you any more, you know, flat screen TVs and stuff. Um, yeah, so, when Polly confides in Tony, he urges him to reconcile with Nucci, reminding him that she brought him up and loved him and has bailed him out many, many times. <clears throat> I mean, and yeah, his life was pretty much a lie to an extent, but this woman also helped him, also raised him, also did all this stuff. Like, this is really your mother. Like, you don't even need to know that Dottie's your mother. There's no point because this, that's a pretty decent way of looking at it. Like, this girl raised you, you know, think about being adopted and not figuring out you're adopted till later in your life. Are you going to then get mad at the people that raised you? I don't think so, honestly. So, yeah, it's kind of like that. But, um, <clears throat> Tony confronts the paramedic who checked his wallet and accuses him of stealing $2,000. Um, the man denies it, but Christopher and others threaten him if he fails to repay the money. And obviously everyone in that area knows who Tony Soprano is, knows who Christopher Multisignes he is. Knows what those people's motives are, knows repercussions for kind of going against them. So, yeah, obviously he's going to try to pay the money. Uh, but following Dick Barone's death, his son Jason has taken over the family sanitation business and is trying to sell it, not knowing it is the Soprano family's front. It's like their way of looking clean to the feds, even though the feds kind of know what the hell is going on. <clears throat> so, though, though ordered not to go ahead, he is too far along to go back <clears throat> and to back out of anything. He's signed all sorts of different contracts and stuff with different people, Chinelli mainly, but, uh, yeah. So, the company trying to buy Barone's roots is associated with Johnny Cinelli. It's kind of like his friend in a way. So now it's become like a New Jersey versus New York war. Um, Tony finally accepts an offer from him and allows the sale to go through. He's like, whatever, as long as you give me like a W-2, you give me some insurance in life and all that stuff. So, Tony also promises Jason's mother that no harm will come to her son. Again, a lot of people know what kind of motives these other guys have. So they want to, so he wants to ensure that her son's not going to get hurt by this because he doesn't really know the business that well. He was kind of just thrown out into the, into the fire, you know, when his father passed away because he has no fucking clue what's going on here. He's just signing contracts. He's like, he sees it at, and he doesn't know that Soprano and anybody else is connected. He sees it as well. I got to provide for my family now that my dad's died. I need to make as much money off this as I can. So. The pleading of a mother for her son drives Polly to leave the hospital room in tears, which is really fucked up. Like It almost brings up some like post-traumatic stuff that makes him think, like, that woman isn't even my mother, you know, that I've been living with. But uh, as Tony leaves the hospital, the paramedic approaches with an envelope of cash. He does not take it. He's like, you know what? It's fine. I'm not going to, like, pester anyone else. Um, he's He has a really interesting outlook on life after, you know, getting out of this coma. And I think that's going to be something interesting, some interesting character development we could see for the rest of the season out of Tony. And maybe this whole, the point of this whole show is for him to kind of find himself and find a way to, like, not be such an asshole all the time. So, uh, as he is wheeled outside, Tony takes a few moments to observe the bustle of life. Like, he's really appreciating it for once. Um, he grabs Janice's hand and comments that every day is a gift to him now, and she acts kind of weird about it, even though she's kind of had these sort of moments in her, for her character in the show. Um, on a riverbank, Polly finds Jason getting ready to go rowing. That's like one of his hobbies. They've seen him do that a couple times. He viciously beats him with a metal pole and demands a monthly cut from him equal to the cost of Nucci's retirement home expenses. 
So he could just use that to pay it off and not his own money. And he realized, you know, yeah, this woman did raise me, but I can't pour all my money into her anymore now that I figured out. She's not even the one that birthed me. So, Brandishing a gun, he warns him not to say a word to Tony about it. Which is extremely fucked up, because now you're going against the boss, now you're going behind his back. And ruining some relationships in a way, and further tarnishing some of them. But a new character we get is Albi Cianfalone. Phil Leotardo's consigliere, who together with Phil attends a meeting regarding Barone's annotation with Tony and Polly outside the hospital. Uh, we find out that Father Phil Intentola is not going to be on the show anymore. He's a lo he was the local Catholic priest and friend of Carmelo's. They obviously has some sort of like romantic relations throughout the show. We learn we well we didn't learn in the episode, but I know now that he's not going to be in the show anymore. Um, and then obviously Aunt Dottie, who's Polly's biological mother. Uh, she died of natural causes, obviously, like, old age. Yeah, pretty solid episode. It's going to be nice to see, you know, Tony finally out of that coma. Um, and they honestly didn't rush it, which I think most shows rush, like, their main character being hurt and being kind of out of commission from the show's storylines. But they used him as an opportunity to, like, change his character. He They used this event that they created, and I, I really like it. I really like the direction they went in. I think it's going to be... Really cool to see how it develops. It's going to be cool to see how Polly tries to get back on fucking track here. It's going to be cool to see how, you know, Barone's annotation, that whole thing goes down. And that might create a war between New Jersey and New York again, which nobody wants. But it creates drama for the show. It's going to create tension later on. And it's a, it's a entertaining aspect. So, yeah, my guys, leave a like, comment, and subscribe, all that stuff. Just throw these clips together and give them to you guys. Yeah, obviously we're going to be doing movies for the next couple of days. I'm not sure what the content's going to look like for the rest of the week, but we'll get to it when we get to it. Peace out.